Hello everyone! Today we will talk about finding for the volume of a sphere. And for us to do that, we need to know what is the relationship between the volume of a cylinder and the volume of a sphere. Also, we need to know how the volume of a cone is related to the volume of a sphere. Let's start with the volume of a cylinder and the volume of a sphere. In this video, we'll demonstrate the ratio of volume of a cylinder and a volume of a sphere. We have a cylinder and a sphere with the same height and diameter. Fill the cylinder with water. and push the ball into the cylinder. The volume of the water left in the cylinder is a third of the original volume. That means the volume of the sphere is two-thirds of the volume of the cylinder. Again, just like in the video, we can conclude that the volume of a sphere is two-thirds of the volume of a cylinder. Now let's watch this next video. In this video, we're going to discover where the formula for the volume of a sphere comes from. In a previous video, we saw that it took two cones to fill a sphere with the same radius. So we'll now go back to recall the volume of a cylinder. And if we remember, the area of the base is pi r squared, since the area of a circle is pi r squared. And we can get the volume of that cylinder by multiplying by the height. We later learned that to get the volume of a cone, we would take the volume of the cylinder with the same height and same radius and simply divide it by 3. As we saw in the experiment, it took two cones to fill up a sphere with the same radius. It's important to note that that would mean the height of the two cones would be the same as the height of the sphere and the radius of the two cones would be also the same as the radius from the sphere. So what this really means is that we could find the volume of one of these cones and simply add another volume of a second cone to determine the volume of a sphere. But this isn't necessarily the most efficient way. If we analyze the relationship between the radius of the cones and the height of the sphere, we'll see that 2 radii is equal to 1 height of the cone and 1 height of the sphere. So rather than calling the height of the cone h, we could essentially replace h with r plus r or 2 times r. Following mathematical convention, we'll bring the coefficient of 2 to the front of the term. And simplifying r squared times r, we get r cubed. Simplifying further, we'll notice that we have two fractions, 2 thirds pi r cubed plus another 2 thirds pi r cubed. So let's write this a little differently to make it look a little easier to work with. While we can likely see that 2 thirds plus 2 thirds is 4 thirds, let's put them together to make this a little more obvious. Since we have a common denominator of 3, we could put our 2 plus 2 in the same numerator over one denominator of 3 to get 
4 thirds pi r cubed, which can also be written as 4 pi r cubed over 3. And again, just like in the video, the volume of a sphere is twice the volume of a cone. And for us to solve for the volume of a sphere, we will simply use the formula 4 pi r cubed divided by 3. Now let's have some examples. Let's find the volume of the figure here, which has a diameter of 10 inches. Again, to solve for its volume, we will use the formula 4 pi r cubed divided by 3. What we need in our formula is only the measure of the radius. Since we're given a diameter, we simply have to divide it by 2. So our radius will be 5. Substituting the given information, we'll have 4 times 3.14 times 5 inches cubed divided by 3. 5 inches cubed is equal to 125 cubic inches. Multiply it to 4 times 3.14 will give us 1,570 cubic inches divided by 3 will have the volume of this sphere is equal to 523.33 cubic inches. Um, by the way, this one is already rounded off to the nearest hundreds since we have here a repeating decimal. Next, a ball has a diameter of 14 centimeters. What is its volume? Again, to find for the volume of a sphere, this is the formula that we will use. We are given diameter, so we need to compute for the radius. And 14 divided by 2 will give us 7, so our radius is 7. Substituting that in our formula, we'll have 4 times 3.14 times 7 centimeters cubed divided by 3. 7 centimeters cubed is equal to 343 cubic centimeters. Multiply it to 4 times 3.14 will give us 4308.08 cubic centimeters. Then divide it by 3, that will be equal to 1436.026667 cubic centimeters. Rounding off to the nearest um, hundreds, will give us 1436.03 cubic centimeters. Another example, this time we are given a hemisphere, which means half of a sphere. So for us to compute for its volume, we need to know first the volume of the entire sphere by using this formula. Substituting the given radius, which is 6 centimeters, we'll have 4 times 3.14 times 6 centimeters cubed divided by 3, we'll have 6 centimeters cubed is equal to 216 cubic centimeters. Multiply it to 4 times 3.14, that will be equal to 2,712.96 cubic centimeters. Then divided by 3, we'll have the volume of the entire sphere as 9,000 or 904.32 cubic centimeters. But since we only have here a hemisphere, we need to divide that volume by 2. So, we'll have 452.16 cubic centimeters. For our last example, a bowl in the form of hemisphere is 4 inches in radius. How many cubic centimeters of soup will it contain? Again, we're given here a hemisphere. So, just like the process we did earlier, let's find first for the volume of the entire sphere using this formula. Substituting the given radius, which is 4 inches, we'll have 4 times 3.14 times 4 inches cubed divided by 3. 4 inches cubed is equal to 64 cubic inches. Multiply it to 4 times 3.14, we'll have 804.84 cubic inches. Then divided by 3, we'll get the volume of the entire sphere, which is 267 cubic inches but we only have here a hemisphere so we need to divide that by 2 and that will give us 133.97 cubic inches and that's it for our lesson for today thank you for listening